Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is going on, fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number 17. I hope that you have your worksheet that you need for today because it is time for you to solve number one and number two on your own. If you're thinking, oh, Miss McCarthy, I'm supposed to have a worksheet. If you look at the link down below or somewhere around this video, you will see a link that you can click to download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in this Math FSA Bootcamp Series. So go ahead and pause the video. Try number one and number two on your own. Throw down your best as if it were the test for these two problems and then come on back to check your work. All right, fifth grade, welcome back. So before we even get started, let's identify the question type, okay? I'm seeing five answer choices here. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's gonna be a multi-select. Did I just say multi? Multi-select. So jot that down if you did not already. Okay, now we are going to read it and mark up our text. So make sure that you're paying attention so you can see if you made any mistakes and that way you can adjust your work, okay? All right, so number one says, Maddie, oh my goodness, okay, so a few months ago, I did a virtual classroom visit, and Maddie from Castleview asked, he said, can I please be in one of your problems on one of your videos? So Maddie, this one's for you, buddy. Maddie wins a challenge and earns his class two and five tenths, or two and a half, hours of recess. Woo, that is a good challenge there. Two and a half hours, or two and five tenths hours of recess. Select all means we're going to try all select all the measurements of time that are equal to two and a half hours so we have 120 minutes 150 minutes for c we have two hours and 1800 or 1800 seconds we have minutes and seconds, we have minutes and seconds. So what we are doing here is we are converting measurements. We need to go from hours into minutes and possibly seconds. So what we need there, we need to make sure that we are using our grade five FSA mathematics reference sheet that you will definitely get on the test. And here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take what we know, which is two and a half hours or two and five tenths hours equals what is what we need to know. So first we're looking at 120 minutes. We're gonna see how many minutes it equals. Equals how many minutes? Could it possibly be 120 or 150? We will find out, but to do that, we need to look, where is it? Oh, it's down here, okay. We need to look and here is, we have that one hour equals 60 minutes. So right underneath, this is how I do it. One hour, see hour and hour, equals 60 
minutes. So we know we are trying to convert from two and a half hours into minutes. So we're going from one hour to 60 minutes. To get from one to 60, we are actually multiplying by 60. Same on the bottom, same on the top. So what we need to do is multiply two and five tenths hours or, or two and a half hours times 60. So let me do that. Let me get a different sheet. Two point five or two and five tenths times 60. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put my zero down there and move to the tens place. So six times five is 30. Woo, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. And six times two is 12. 12 plus three equals 15. But we have one digit behind the decimals. And here's our ninja decimal. Hiya! We're going to move that one place in. So that would be 150 minutes. So which answer choice do we need to mark? B. And we can eliminate A because we just tried it and we definitely got 150 minutes. So that's a long time, Maddie, getting your class that much recess, but we still have more choices to take a look at. So let's see, we've got two hours and 1,800 seconds. So, okay, hang on a second. I'm seeing two hours and 1,800 seconds. So for two and five tenths, really, we can go ahead and take that out and just compare the five tenths of an hour to the and to see if that's how many seconds it is. So we know that one hour, we're going to convert that into minutes, which we're then going to convert into seconds. One hour equals 60 minutes. And then one minute equals 60 seconds. So what we need to do is multiply our 60 minutes times 60 to get the number of seconds. So that would be six times six, which is 36, and we have two zeros there, so 3,600 seconds. We wanna know what half an hour equals. Then half of an hour equals 30 minutes. And if we multiply that by 60, we know that we can just go to six times three, which is 18, and there's two zeros. So that would be 1,800 seconds. So can we go ahead and mark C? Yes, we can. All right, now for D, let's try to see if we can get it to be two and a half hours here. So I'm seeing 100 minutes and 3,000 seconds. All right, let's see how many hours we can crank out of here though. So I'm saying let's let's move these seconds back into minutes and see what we can get. So we know that one minute equals how many seconds. There's a bunch of different ways that we could go about doing this. This is just the way I'm seeing. And if you look at your reference sheet, it says that one minute equals how many seconds? 60. That's right. Okay. So we want to know how many minutes will it be if we have three thousand seconds. So here we're trying to convert our seconds into minutes. So we're going to go this way from 60 down to one. We would be dividing by 60. So we're going to do that on the bottom two. So how many times does 60 go into 3000? Well, we know that five times would give us 300, right? So 50 times would give us 3,000. So that means that 3,000 seconds equals 50 minutes. All right, let's plug it in. So now we have 100 minutes plus 50 minutes, which would give us 150 minutes. And that was the same as B. So D it is. And I know that we can eliminate E because we know that 120 minutes equals two hours. How did I know that? Because 60 minutes plus 60 minutes gives us 120 and each of these is one hour. One plus one equals two hours. So that takes care of that guy. But then 60 seconds would be two hours and not enough minutes. We would still need 30 minutes and there's a big difference between 30 minutes that we would need to get that half of an hour and 60 seconds. 
So no, we can eliminate that. Whoo, Maddie, that was a challenging one. Man, but you know what? Two and a half hours of recess would be pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. All right, we're at number two now and I'm seeing a grid. So this question type will be a gridded response. All right, y'all. And for number two, I would love to give Miss Martin's class a huge shout out at Ben Hill Griffin Jr. Elementary. So I know y'all are watching. I know you are going to rock this FSA test because you're going to throw down your best. That's just how you do it along with everybody else out there watching too. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle number two. Miss Martin's class at Ben Hill Griffin Jr. Elementary is collecting cans of food for a food drive. That is awesome. They have a goal to collect three tons of food. Ooh, there's a unit right there. Tons. So far, they have collected 5,000 pounds and 160 ounces of food. How many more? Which means I'm going to subtract how many more ounces of food do they need to reach their goal? We know they have a goal of three tons and we know they have pounds and ounces. So what we need to do is convert the three tons into pounds and then those pounds into ounces first. That's at least how I would like to tackle this. So according to our reference sheet, how many tons make up a pound? Well, here we go. We have that one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So I'm gonna jot that down. Under ton, one ton equals 2,000 pounds. So we're going from tons to pounds, tons to pounds. Going from one to 2,000, we're actually increasing. So we're gonna multiply by 2,000 here. Same on the bottom, same on the top, and three times 2,000 equals 6,000 pounds, okay? And now we're going from pounds to ounces. Well, here it is. One pound equals 16 ounces, all right. So one pound equals 16 ounces, going from pounds to ounces, we're multiplying by 16. Going from pounds to ounces, we are multiplying by 16. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and multiply 16 times six and then put my zeros on. Six times six is 36. Ooh, it's high up here, nice landing, dude. Six times one is six, plus three is nine. So nine, but it was really six, Thousand, so I'm gonna make it 96,000 ounces. And that was their goal. They had three tons, which when we convert the measurement, it equals 96,000. Now, what else do we know? We know that so far they have collected 5,000 pounds and 160 ounces of food. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a second. If you are thinking to yourself, oh man, I really need some more help converting measurements. I promise you at the end of this, I'm gonna send you in the direction to get some more help. So just stay tuned, stay with me. For this one, I'm talking more just about the FSA style of questioning, but if you know that you need some more help, just stay tuned, okay? So, so far they have 5,000 pounds and 160 ounces. Now we need to convert these 5,000 pounds into ounces. Why into ounces? Because it says how many more ounces. So we know the goal was 96 ounces. Now we're trying to figure out what they currently have. 1,000 pounds equals how many ounces? Well, again, if you look at the reference sheet, one pound equals 16 ounces. So let's jot that down, match them up. Here's my pound side. One pound equals 16 ounces. We know that we are converting from pounds into ounces. So when we look at the numbers, one to 16, we're going up. So we're multiplying by 16. Same on the bottom, same on the top. So I'm gonna take 16 times five, and then I'll add those zeros at the end. Six times five is 30. Five times one is five plus three is eight. And really it was 5,000. So let's do one, two, three, 80,000. Okay, so they have collected 85,000 pounds, which is equivalent to 80,000 ounces of food. But let's not forget that they also had 160 ounces. So let's add that on. 
Okay, this is what they have so far. They have 80,160 ounces so far. All right, so now we have to take what we know is their goal, 96,000, minus how much they currently have, which is that number 80,160, and we're going to subtract. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus six, we need to regroup, don't we? But there's nothing right there. So let's go to the six, take one, that becomes a five, give one, that becomes a 10. Take one, that becomes a nine, give one, that becomes a 10. Now 10 minus six is four, nine minus one is eight, five minus zero is five, and nine minus eight is one. So the answer is 15,840 is how many ounces they still need. I'm gonna jot that in and remember there is no comma to, these are periods there, do not make these into commas. Just like this. Or you could have done zero, four, eight, five, one. Now if I do not bubble these in, it will be marked wrong. So I need to make sure that I bubble it in using not a blue pen, but a number two pencil, just like that. All right, fifth grade. Now I'm gonna be real with you. Converting measurements can be challenging. They can get pretty intense at the fifth grade level, but you need to not give up, okay? In fact, I wanna leave you with some more videos to help you practice, because I know from experience as a teacher, this is an area where students struggle. And I have a certain way that I teach it in McCarthy Math 155. So there should be a link below or somewhere around this video for McCarthy Math 155. Make sure you sign up for your free seven day trial and then check out unit seven. Unit seven, it has 15 videos. And if this is something that you know that you need help with, get yourself the free trial, check out those 15 videos. They take you from like the most basic into more intense problems. And by the end of it, you should feel a lot more confident with converting measurements. Now, in order to continue watching after seven days, you do need to become a member. And teachers, these are videos that you can actually share with your students. So during your free trial, I encourage you to try to do that. Make sure it works for you. And if you need help, I walk through how to do just that on my website. Click on the tutorials tab and check out video number five. Another link that I would love for you to check out is to the how to pass the math FSA series. This was a series that I created a few years back when the FSA was a computer-based test. It's not a computer-based test anymore, it's a paper-based test, which is why I'm filming the Math FSA boot camp, which reflects that paper-based test. But still, those how to pass the Math FSA problems and videos are still really helpful and they are standards-based, so check those out. I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. You can also find me on YouTube, of course, at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, if you're watching from YouTube, if you could go ahead and smash that like button, that would be awesome. Not just for me, but for all the students that you will have the chance to impact. You see, the more likes these videos get, the more they will reach out to other students and impact them. I'm on a mission to make math fun, to make it click, and to make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. So by smashing that like button, you are helping me with my mission. And for that, I thank you. While you're at it, you can go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode.